This beta tank photo was submitted to me on Instagram by Michigan State Dressage. This looks like a 10 gallon tank, which is double the minimum size. I love to see that. I see you painted the background black. I love that. I can see your filter. I can see your heater. I like the centerpiece that you've chosen and the pebbles that you scattered around it. And it looks like you know what you're doing with this lucky bamboo. You've got the leaves sticking up out of the water and just the stem is in the water. And that is important for lucky bamboo. However, what I'm noticing is that this tank probably doesn't have a lid because I see that lucky bamboo sticking up out of the top. Betta fish are jumpers and they will jump out of the tank if you don't have a lid on it. Maybe it hasn't happened yet, but I do recommend that you get a lid for this tank and that might mean you have to lose the lucky bamboo. That being said, I would like to see more dense plant coverage in this tank. I like that you do have a planted tank, but there is far too much open swimming room in this tank and bettas thrive with really heavy, dense plant coverage. Overall, it's not a bad tank for a betta fish, but I do see some places where you can improve. Opening my videos with a betta tank review is different. It's a change for this channel, but it is something I plan on doing in every video for the foreseeable future. My last video was a viewer betta tank review, and I received so many submissions for that that there's no way I could get through them all in one video. So for the foreseeable future, I do plan on opening every video with a betta tank review, as I already have quite the backlog of tank photos to review. If you want to submit your about a tank to be reviewed, send it to me in a DM on Instagram and I will get to it eventually. Now without any further ado, let's get into the video. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy. When people are looking for a good beginner snake or a good snake for a first time snake owner, it's often recommended that they get a corn snake or a ball python. Both of these snakes can be great beginner snakes, but they each have their own drawbacks that make them a little less beginner friendly than advertised. Enter the Kenyan sand boa. I personally believe that Kenyan sand boas belong on the list of great beginner snakes alongside ball pythons and corn snakes. Personally, I think they're a little bit easier to keep than either of those species, and we'll get into the reasons why in this video. I should note this video is not a care guide, and if you are doing research on how to care for a Kenyan sand boa, this video may be beneficial in your research, but you should do more research than just watching this video because I do not cover a lot of the basics of Kenyan sand boa care. Like any reptile, Kenyan sand boas do require specialized care and you should do as much research as possible before getting one. Kenyan sand boas are a smaller species of snake known for being slow moving and docile. They come in a variety of colors and patterns known as morphs with the wild types being brown and orange like Nightcrawler here. The average lifespan of a Kenyan sand boa in captivity is up to 15 years which is a little bit shorter than a ball python, but about on par with a corn snake. And there are some cases of really well taken care of Kenyan sand boas living even longer. In this video, I'm going to get into the reasons why I believe Kenyan sand boas deserve to be listed as good beginner snakes. But there are also some downsides to keep in mind, which I'll get into later in this video. The first reason why I think Kenyan sand boas make great beginner snakes is because of how handleable they are. Kenyan sand boas are generally docile and easy to handle. Due to their smaller size, they can be a little fragile, but they generally aren't going to try to strike or escape. Ball pythons are known for being super docile and easy to handle, but that's not always the case. Some ball pythons can be quite defensive, even after you work with them for a while, and very quick to strike. One of my ball pythons, Kitty, is like that. Anytime I open up her enclosure, she gets very defensive and she tries to strike at me. I've had her for over a year now. I've been working with her quite a bit and honestly, she hasn't really gotten any better. I don't personally know of any Kenyan sand boas that are like that. I'm sure that some exceptions do exist, but I've never heard of it. But because of their smaller size, they are very easy to just pick up and hold. They're also very slow moving, so even if they were trying to escape or get away from you, they would have a very difficult time doing so. Corn snakes and other colubrids, though, can be very flighty, and they're very fast moving and very thin and small, and if they wanna get away from you, they can very easily succeed in doing so. A corn snake or other type of colubrid can move very fast and escape your grasp very easily if it wants to. In general, Kenyan sand boas are also very unlikely to escape. Not only are they unlikely to escape you while you're holding or handling them, but they are unlikely to escape their enclosure. Since Kenyan sand boas are a burrowing species, when they're in their enclosure, they spend most of their time burrowed underneath the substrate. They're unlikely to climb, which makes them unlikely to get to the top of their enclosure where the lid is. And if there happens to be a small gap up at the top of the tank where the lid is, they're less likely to climb up there and get out of that gap. Whereas a corn snake or even a ball python could climb up to the top of their tank 
and get out through a little opening. Baby corn snakes in particular can escape very tiny openings, and once they escape, they are almost impossible to find. Speaking of enclosures, because Kenyan sand boas stay smaller than ball pythons or corn snakes, they don't require as large of an enclosure. Kenyan sand boas do not get large at all. Nightcrawler here is about a year old, and as you can tell, he is, uh, not very big. Adult male Kenyan sand boas get about 15 to 20 inches long, and the females can get up to about 30 inches long. Whereas ball pythons can grow up to five feet long or even bigger in some cases, and corn snakes can grow over six feet long. They stay thin, but they get pretty long. And because Kenyan sand boas are such a small species, you can put a juvenile like Nightcrawler here in a 10 gallon tank. That's what I keep him in. And you can keep a full grown adult in a 20 gallon long. Of course, I always recommend going bigger if you can. However, a 20 gallon long is a great minimum size for an adult Kenyan sand boa. Also on the topic of the enclosure, Kenyan sand boas don't really require any humidity. They they do come from very arid regions in the wild in Africa, and so they don't need a high humidity like a tropical species like ball pythons. They may need more humidity when shedding, but you can accomplish that by providing them with a humid hide or a shed box, or by misting their enclosure when they're in blue. I should, however, note if you keep them on aspen, don't mist their enclosure because aspen is prone to molding. Unlike some snakes, Kenyan sand bows don't require any special lighting, they don't require UVB. Of course, neither do ball pythons or corn snakes, but that is another thing that makes Kenyan sand boas beginner friendly. Of course, most reptiles will benefit from being provided with UVB. Kenyan sand boas are no exception, but they don't need it like some snake species do. Regarding heating, you can provide them with overhead heat if you so choose, in the form of a ceramic heat emitter or a heat bulb, or you can use an under tank heat mat, which is what I do. Either way, just make sure you have that heat source hooked up to a thermostat so you can regulate the temperature. Kenyan sand boas also have a great appetite, unlike ball pythons, which are known to go on hunger strikes or be picky eaters. A lot of you who follow me on social media know that my ball python Charles, right here, that guy, he has gone on several hunger strikes, sometimes lasting for months on end. He's also really picky about the color of the rat that you feed him. It has to be an all white rat. My ball python Jean is also picky in the sense that her rat can't be wet at all. Its fur has to be perfectly dry, which is kind of annoying when I thaw out my rats in Ziploc bags in water. Sometimes the seal is not airtight, water gets into the bag, and the rat gets wet. And if that happens, Jean will not eat the rat. Kenyan sand boas are boas, and like boas, they have a great appetite. It is very unlikely for a Kenyan sand boa to skip a meal. Even when he is deep in blue and about to shed, Nightcrawler will take a meal. Kenyan sand boas also adapt to eating frozen thawed very easily because they have such a huge appetite. When I got Nightcrawler, I didn't even attempt to feed him live food. I just went straight to frozen thawed and he took it. And the final reason why I think Kenyan sand boas deserve to be recommended as beginner snakes is because of how accessible they are. They are super easy to find. You can find them at pretty much any reptile expo and most pet shops that sell a variety of reptiles. Generally, you won't find them at the chain pet stores like your Petco and your PetSmart, but they are definitely going to be at your local reptile shop or your local exotic pet store. They're also super available online. You can buy them directly from a breeder and have them shipped to your home. They're also super affordable, generally under $50 for a wild type like Nightcrawler here. The more fancy and rare morphs will be a little more expensive and maybe cost prohibitive, but a wild type or another more common morph won't be expensive at all. Also, because they're smaller and they don't require a huge enclosure, that enclosure is going to be a lot more affordable as well. And so will all the items that you need to put inside that enclosure, the substrate, the hides, the water dish, all of that stuff is going to be a lot more affordable than it will be for a larger snake or a more tropical snake. They're also going to eat smaller food than ball pythons and corn snakes, which means the food is going to be more affordable as well. They never get large enough to eat rats. They're going to stay on mice their whole lives. And because they're so slow growing, they're going to stay on pinky mice for a really long time and that's going to save you money on feeders. Of course, no snake is the perfect beginner snake, and there are some downsides to keeping any pet snake. Kenyan sand boas are no exception. There are some cons that you should be aware of if you are thinking of getting a Kenyan sand boa. The first is the negatives that come with having such a small snake. No one is going to look at your Kenyan sand boa and say, wow, now that's a lot of snake. 
Also, in the unlikely event that the Kenyan sand boa does escape or get away from you, they're going to be a lot harder to find because of their size. It would be very easy to lose this guy in a mess of wires behind my entertainment center or my desktop computer. Also, because they are a burrowing species, you may not see them in their enclosure very often. You might occasionally see their head popping up out of the substrate, or they might come out if they're hungry or thirsty, but they won't be just chilling out out in the open for you to see. They're going to stay buried in that substrate most of the time. And that means when you want to get them out, you might have to go digging for them. And if you're trying to feed them, occasionally that might be the case too. I have had to dig him out to feed him before. He took the food right away, but it has happened. And if you have a smaller guy like this in a larger enclosure, like a 20 gallon, it could be especially hard to find him. That's why currently I have Nightcrawler in a 10 gallon, but I do plan to upgrade him to a 20 gallon long when he gets bigger. It's also very common for Kenyan Sandbows to get stuck shed. Because they come from a more arid environment and don't require a lot of humidity, when they are in shed, oftentimes people forget to provide them with extra humidity, or they have an environment in which extra humidity can't be provided, and they have issues shedding or issues having stuck shed. I mentioned earlier, if you use aspen as your substrate, you can't mist that down when they're in shed because that will cause mold. With other substrates like coconut fiber, that might not be so much of a problem, but you'd have to know when they're in blue to give them that extra humidity, and because they spend so much time burrowed, you oftentimes don't know that they're going to shed until after they've shed. They're also prone to obesity because they're always burrowed, and if you don't take them out regularly to handle them, you may not notice that they're getting a little chubby. And although Kenyan sand boas are unlikely to strike when being handled, they are likely to strike if they think they're being fed. They are ambush predators who burrow, and when they strike, they will whip their head around and strike something that's behind them. It is also possible to overhandle a Kenyan sand boa, and I'm kind of pushing that limit right now by filming this video. Kenyan sand boas can, in fact, get stressed from overhandling, and that can change their demeanor. They can become defensive from a long handling session. Now, if they bite you, obviously that's not going to hurt because it's such a small snake, but it could hurt the sand boa. In fact, a bite from a sand boa would be more dangerous to the snake than it would be to the person that got bit. Don't get me wrong, they do great with handling, but they don't particularly like it, and they do have a limit. When you handle a Kenyan sand boa, or really any snake, you're not doing it for their enjoyment or their benefit, you're doing it for yours. And it's wise to remember that. It is good to handle your sand boa regularly and make sure they stay socialized. However, there is a limit, there is such a thing as too much, so make sure your handling sessions aren't too extensive. Well, that's it. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you made it this far into the video and you're not already subscribed, you probably should be. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell. So that way you get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm also on TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. So make sure you're following me on those platforms. And I also have a PO box if you want to send me something to hang on the wall. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.